Hey, what's up, my AKA Patters? Today we're talking about another comic book investment influencer. The once and only future king of it all. His name is Swagger Haas. And if you guys aren't familiar with him, I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction. But bring you, bring the light. And if you watch his channel, if you're one of his minions, I'm hoping you guys stay tuned. We have to discuss what he calls the comic book index. Or, as I classify it, as comic book investment index. People, it's a joke. It's a big LOL. It is time that the AKA Pad Army discusses this. Let's go. And here we go, aka Patty Waddies, TGIF, and happy Valentine's Day. I'm going to be saying this to you a couple times, and happy Super Bowl Eve Eve. Tonight is Valentine's Day in this household. Can't wait to go out. We're going to be out to dinner in a little bit. One of Philly's best restaurants. Welcome back to the channel, my AKA Padders. Peter A. DeLuca here, AKA Pad69, as I am on some social media networks, but known throughout Philadelphia, PA, Europe, and the vast multiverse as your eclectic one. People. Here we go. So Swagger Haas and, and guys, guys, I, I used to watch him. I used to watch his channel. I used to care about what he had to say until I realized that he's just peddling nonsense. And so many of these comic book investment influencers like Gem Mint and Comic Tom 101, they're not promoting the idea that comic books need to be great on a weekly basis to rebuild the comic book market. Great books, great sales, thriving retailers. Now, what does Swagger Haas have to do about all of this? What does he have to say about all of this? Look, he pushes this idea. Slabs. You have to go out there and get yourself a slab in the grade of something. And hey, here's a rumor Tell me if you heard this before. Here's a rumor of a third character from the left that could be appearing in the Marvel Cinematic Universe movie or TV show. Are you ready? Are you ready to shell out all your hard-earned money on zero? Because that's what he pitches, and that's what all of his contemporaries pitch. Swagger Haas is unique because amongst this fog and mirrors, he has this thing. And I heard him repeat it a lot. And he goes on to shows, and sometimes when he's live streaming with other individuals, it's introduced as such. This is the guy that created and monitors and curates the comic book index, or as I like to call it, the comic book investment index. Now, what is exactly is an index? <sighs> okay, so an index, right here, guys. Let's, let's just go right here, okay? I'm going to look it up, and I'm going to put it up there on the screen for you. A financial index is a group of securities, derivatives, and other financial instruments that measure the performance of a specific market, asset, class, market sector, or investment strategy. Okay, well, maybe, maybe he means more or less about uh, an index fund. What's an index fund? Index funds are investment funds that follow benchmark a uh, benchmark index such as S&P 500. We heard about that before, or the Nasdaq 100. When you put your money in an index fund, fund. So an index fund uh, is uh, basically a market within the market, but it is measured against what it would be considered the top tier stocks or performers or evergreens blue chips of that market. So he has done something very similar in the comic book marketplace. It's commendable, it's a fun idea, but there's not enough data, there's not enough institutional knowledge, there's not enough of anything to measure the comic book market. And the reason for that is here's the crazy thing. And it kind of goes to Hulk 180, the true and the once the once stated first appearance of Wolverine versus Hulk 181. See, 
180 is the true first appearance of Wolverine. 181 is the one that everyone goes for. Something very similar is with the Michael Jordan Jumpman rookie card versus a card that came out the previous year by Fleer. So where does the comic book market go when it determines its rates, uh, its fever, what it adopts? People, it's always been chaotic. It, it has never made much sense. There's not a lot of correlation to uh, what exactly is uh, the first appearance of Cable. Is it New Mutants 87? Or is it what, like Uncanny X-Men? I, I forget the issue where, where Nathan Summers is born. The birth of the character to become Cable is, is technically, we have to say, is the first appearance of Cable. But unlike the baseball card market or the sports card market, uh, there's nothing but data to support not just the sales, but the athletes and how they connect to history and how they connect to an audience. A lot of it is chartable. You and and you might want to say, well, people like Pete, you know, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe made Iron Man fifty five spike up. It made it go through the roof uh, because of uh, you know that Thanos guy he sprinkled throughout the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, and, and yes and no, because uh, comparatively speaking, some of Thanos' surrounding characters uh, would also spike. And we really don't get that. See, when Joe DiMaggio dated Marilyn Mon Monroe, he solidified himself in the American culture. Simon and Garfunkel put him into a song, further solidifying Joe DiMaggio. And as time went on, on people understood the sports car draw of a Joe DiMaggio or a Michael Jordan, and the list goes on and on. When it comes to the comic book marketplace, we really don't have that. I feel like we only have examples of things that have somewhat stood the test of time, but comparatively speaking, Swagahals and all of his cohorts, they got a lot of attention, they got uh, a, all this momentum, and you know they were able to track a lot of things that were rising up in value because people were dumping their COVID checks and their stimulus checks into the marketplace. And once people realize they didn't have that money anymore and they have to start paying their bills and getting jobs, the market tanked. And he continues with this index fund that we all know how the data is aggregated. We all know he says it might be like the 300 bucks from like these errors. You need all the books from all the errors to really have an index fund and or index block and you need an algorithm to even roll in culturally what is happening part of the algorithm also needs to pull in uh, parts of the economy and what's happening and people spending power the sports card marketplace does something very similar but there's just so much more data when it comes to sports cards and there's a, a true cultural correlation to sports cards uh, we can track uh, certain athletes uh, right down to them in, in the minors and, and we, we again we have all of their stats and it makes it you now that's part of make, making sports collecting a lot of fun but the comparison isn't totally honest because <sighs> the comic book marketplace has, is always chaotic, it's always upside down. Uh, if the comic book marketplace was trackable, uh, every single comic book store owner you know would be driving a BMW, and they really don't. They drive crappy cars for a particular reason. The comic book index fund that this guy pushes is uh, it's hogwash. It makes no sense. Uh, again, we have no data. Uh, we don't have enough books, and, and I'm exaggerating a little bit when I say we need like all of the books, but there's just not enough documentation. People, we dispute modern day sales because of zero data. Think about that, and, and we want to potentially chart why something is spiking. You know, like first appearance of Ghost Rider keeps going up. Zero speculation support for for Ghost Rider, like, you know, like, there's nothing coming out, there hasn't been anything coming out for Ghost Rider outside of, you know, the, uh, the, the Shields TV show for quite some time, and no one, that really didn't excite any, anybody, all the, you know, like, Captain Marvel stuff, all the Captain Marvel stuff should be spiking, and it's not, the algorithm, and, or the index would be able to compare that versus uh, something else, and something else would be like a blue chip 
block or like a, a blue chip S&P 500, uh, which are the Evergreens sales. Like the, the guys that we know are making money within the economy and we measure things against that. Having a comic book index that isn't measured against anything, it's just it's still you giving your opinion out there. And I just feel like it's disingenuous of him to act like this thing is any type of indicator because even now during this spiral, uh, comic prices are dropping and no one can explain which ones and why. It makes no sense. You know, like technically shouldn't the authority number one be a few hundred dollars shouldn't the boys number one be a few hundred dollars and i'm talking raw prices here i'm not talking anything great but they're not they're still affordable and it makes no effing sense technically too you even want to argue that spawn number one should be easily like a hundred a hundred and thirty five dollar book and it's not it's like a 25 ish book oh like it has been for a very long time it doesn't matter how many of those are out there there should be a high enough demand for spawn but people uh just just be mindful uh it's better to buy what you want to read uh, if you read something you enjoy it and it's affordable buy it and give it to a friend and be vocal on what you know why you're passionate about that storyline and yes we have to be patient with the current comic book market because there's just not enough coming out to drive people back into comic book stores. So anything that is not saying that, that doesn't take that position, that's the enemy. We need strong, regular books to grow the marketplace. That's the only thing. Investments will only, and slabs will only pull money away from the marketplace. Mm -hmm.